Today, I'm going to give you a 10 minute demonstration into the world of CPQ. CPQ stands for Configure Price Quote, and that means that an item can be configured, priced up, and quoted for. In the example I'm about to show you, it's a scooter. The scooter has a few options in terms of the base, the power, the seat type, and other elements that go into it. And we can use our system in Business Central to configure each element, also labor that can be assigned to it. So let me take you into the system and show you what this looks like. So on my screen, you'll see I'm logged into Business Central and I'm logged into the premium experience. Premium means we have the manufacturing components that are required to use this configuration. Now, in this demonstration, it is a very quick demonstration. Uh, we're going to be looking at a scooter and three potential configurations. So let me show you what the item looks like. I'm going to take you to the item card first. And my items start with 7,000 or 70,000. If I scroll down here, it's these three of these four items down here under the scooter. So we've got the scooter, the scooter base, the scooter options and the seat. And that's the configuration. Now, you'll notice that this scooter 70073 already has a default assembly policy assigned to it, which is great, which means whenever we want to sell this scooter and it's a generic type of scooter, we can look at those components. And those components come into being the base, which is the type A base, and it could be the model number or name if you wish. Uh, the next is the option, which is the power option one, which is the lowest power option. And also what type of seats, which is the max load seat of 85 kilo, uh, small seat, which is the maximum load of 85 kilograms. And we need two hours of Catherine's time. That's just a standard out of the box assembly policy for that item. But you'll have a situation where a client wants to have different configurations where, for example, the power options, if I show you this power option as an example, if I click on item and show you the variance, we could have different options for the power, option one, two, and three. This could be battery size or battery capacity or something similar, or maybe a sealed battery. So that's an example of a configuration that needs to happen. And we have rules that are associated to each business. Let me take you into the uh, configurating item categories, this uh, shortcut up here, which I've, I've pinned to the front screen. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at the scooter um, item category. We've given it a name, and it's gonna be a configuration of an item. We've also defined which data templates are going to be used. So when, when this item is actually consumed or made, certain elements are already assigned to each configuration, which can greatly help make sure the correct data is captured when the item is created. So let me just show you what this looks like as a configurator itself. So if I click on the scooter and click on configuration options, we've designed this configuration so that it's a logical sequence of events from 10 through to 50. So first is the scooter configuration and a help test text message. And below here are the lines that you can select from. So for, for this item number 70073, which is the base type of item, which one of these three would you like to have? It gives a default quantity as well. We can capture other things like uh, a def default choice by default. Uh, we can also link to more complex uh, routes if needed. Uh, again, just for a simple demonstration, we'll just keep it simple. The next is the power base. So now we have to select 70074, which is the different item. This is the base. This is the type of um, base itself. This could be a, a four-wheel drive or off-road, four or, off or maybe six wheels or whatever the case might be. We've got default quantities assigned to them as well. Um, I do have a checkbox next to each of these, which means that each of these requirements are mandatory. So as we go through, we can actually tell the system what's required what's required for this configuration. Now that's just for one type of configuration and you could have any number of permutations of that. As you can see here as well, we've got two types of employees that can actually complete this process. Catherine Hull, which is a defaulted for one hour effort and Martin Horse, which is two hours. That could be a junior person as, as an example. So that's fine, let's set that up. But what happens when you've got a requirement where a certain type of base, let's say uh, the power base C, could only be used with the seat option of um, extra heavy or extra large, I think I called it, extra large, this one. So you can do that with what's called a re uh, create a rule action. And I'll just show you quickly the rule. I'm gonna edit the current rule. And we logically step through the case scenarios, like for example, when the choice of the base equals this, and these two options are selected, then this seat needs to be optioned. 
So um, that's obviously a very basic scenario and, and each business requirement will be unique and we'll, we'll work through those processes with you. We have uh, conditional statements as well. For example, um, if a certain type is selected, then X amount of labor is also required. And in this example, uh, Marty's required for, for, um, for the purposes of, of completing this, uh, this job. And that be maybe mean because he's more experienced in this type of seat assembly. Um, so that's obviously a very quick overview. Um, it does get quite detailed and complex, but again, for demonstration purposes, we're just giving a very quick overview. So we can actually test the configuration out as well now by clicking on test. And you will see anything that was mandatory is now in red, and that's a logical step of processes. The scooter configuration is first. So we have to first select from the list what type of scooter it is going to be. And we'll select our type C because that was the example that we were going to run through. Now, the variant code automatically comes across, so we know which variant type it is. The quantity comes across as well as the description. Now, you can increase the description so it makes more meaningful sense when you're going to sell this item, but we'll leave it as this for now. The net weight of the item comes across, uh, any line costs associated to it, as well as what the unit of measure is, uh, and as well as the unit price. Now, if there was two of these, this would be $4,000 uh, for the, um, for the uh, multiplication there. Uh, let's look at the power base as the next one. Let's go for power base C, automatically defaults, puts the price in there, um, and also increases the um, the price, uh, the, the weight as well as the price, I should say. That's the net weight, and that's the unit price. We'll continue down. We'll go for power option three. We'll go for the extra large seat, and uh, Marty, as we said, would be required for two, for two hours in this example. So that's it. So we've got a total weight down here and a total price. Now. And the example here is we could actually um, create this configuration and use that in our in our as an item for later, which I'll do that now just so you can see that process. It's created item number nine. We'd probably have a better item numbering association, but demonstration that will do fine. And we can go look at our item nine just to see what it's done. So if I scroll down to nine, <clears throat> I could also search for it by typing nine, but there's our scooter, number nine, scooter. It's got the item category of scooter, and you can see it's got a bomb assembly of yes, with the unit cost associated to it and the retail price. So the system has automatically created this new item that can be resold in the future. If I click on yes here next to the assembly bomb, we'll actually see all those components and elements that we um, pre-selected, which is really nice. Now that's fine if we wanna have an item that's going to be reused again and again, but let's take an example where a customer requires something on the fly. So I'm just gonna open up a sales order. I'm gonna begin a new sales order by clicking on new. And I'm just gonna pick a customer from the list. Uh, 20,000 is my favorite customer. Um, and what we're gonna do now is capture the requirements on what the, when the posting is requirement, what the um, actual date for the order is, when the customer is expecting it to get it by, which is the requested delivery date. If the customer wants to provide us a purchase order number, we catch that. And also this, in this example, my salesperson is J.O. Who, who, manages, who also gets commission for this sale. Uh, so now, rather than using this list and finding the existing list of numbers here, and remember we did number nine as an example, so we could pick up number nine here and use that here. What we can do is rather than selecting this scooter, um, because we know that's that was the one that we pre-configured, I can delete this. And I can use the function inside of the line option here. So under line, under configurator, I can click on what's called bomb designer. And now in my bomb designer, I can select what type of bomb I'd like to design. And in this example, we're going to do our scooter. And the same questions come up. So I can have a conversation with my client saying, right, you need type B in this case. Uh, yes, you want the uh, power base of A, which is the low battery spe spec. Uh, we need an additional wheel, for example. Um, and we want the small seat. And in that case, we know we need Catherine uh, because there's only one hour of labor. That will then create the net weights and the total MSRP. And all we need to do is press um, up, uh, sorry, update sales one. All of the details now flow straight into the sales order. I can then go to uh, release this uh, and pr produce it in as, as, a, as a manufacturing process, or I can post and send this to the client as a uh, as a as a and attach as a PDF so they can view it and make sure they're happy with it. Um, we can also go down to the line level and and uh, explode the bill of materials so we can actually have them all um, presented on the on the screen as well. So many ways of presenting the data back to the client as well. They may just be very happy to have the one total amount as an example as well. 
but that's basically the process. Um, I was just it was a real quick overview of how uh, Configurator can work. Uh, I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.